francophone, but me. he's a libertarian and believes in our unable God-given rights of freedom. I was talking about it before I go there. Some people might have seen me shaking my head when Patrick was Patrick Brown was saying we should put our uh, we shouldn't uh, put property rights in our constitution, and I was going like this when he was saying that. And the reason is, as pro as many of the landowners here will agree. We have already protection of our letters patent. Letters patent have stood up in court. Municipalities are made by letters patent. The governor general is appointed with letters patent. Land, our, our letters patent that comes with every piece of property in Canada. You have that, it'll stand up in court. The moment you write it down, it's no longer God given. If man can write it down, man can take it away from you. And with our charter, with the uh, 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 escape clauses there, the Notwithstanding clauses, but the notwithstanding clauses they have, if we put it in our charter, they're going to take away our rights and freedoms. So don't put it, don't have it written down. It's God given. If if it's not written down, they can't take it away from us. So that's why I'm against. It. And now Jean Serge, would you come and talk to us about your God given rights that have been stolen? Thank you. Um, it's always a pleasure to be uh, addressing this crowd. Um, before I start, last night, I'm going to tell you a small, uh, a funny event that happened last night. I was, I rarely turn the TV on anymore. Um, Friday night, I've got a show that I watch, but it's at 9 o'clock, so prior to that, I turn the TV on early because I'll forget about it. And as I'm going through the channels, I came across the Rick Mercer report. I don't know how many of you have watched it. I ever watched Rick Mercer. It's a satire, but on the left side of the spectrum. So he had something on Alan Boyle, who was a singer, and didn't know who he was. It's the next segment that came on. He starts showing the sky, and he's, uh, it's, a, it's a gas plant. He started talking about the billion dollars that was wasted on the gas plant. And I'm going, well, I got the right channel. Yeah, right, right. So I, he kept on talking, and then he talks about orange. How much of that was a mess? And then he talks about the hydro, how that was a mess. I'm really wondering if I got the right channel. I had to check. <laughs> yeah, it's on channel four. Then he brought Mars. I don't know if anybody is yeah. aware yeah, of so Mars. Yeah, so we know about that. And then he says that the province of Ontario, the Liberal government, has done such a good job at wasting tax dollars money. Their next project is Big Hole Ontario. And he, he comes along, he's got a construction hat, he's got construction workers walking all around, machinery walking all, going all around. I'm, I, I mean, I might forget the term, because by this time I'm laughing my head off. And he literally has a big, big hole, no, uh, bottomless pit, and this is where all taxpayers' money is going to go from now on. And he's got uh, this... this well, a person representing the average taxpayer, and he says, aren't you happy on how your money is being wasted by this government on being put in this big hole? She goes, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then he's got this tractor come along with a big bucket of, tax, of, of dollars in it, and it says, this is the money we've collected from the taxpayers of Kitchener, Waterloo, and dumps it in the hole. <laughs> so it's too bad Jack and uh, Patrick are gone because they should Google it. And put it on their website because this is a wow. this is a keeper. I have no idea what got into Rick Mercer to do something like that. <laughs> but that's how we start. That's that's how we. Uh, I, I got off the show last night because I didn't want to ruin my good humor. But it, it's really an example of how you have one gentleman here earlier who said he was a liberal in the past is now conservative. How some people are waking up to the wasteful measures that our government that we have right now is doing. I think Justin Trudeau made a couple more conservatives this week. <laughs> Probably, yes. So that's uh, that was my opening comment. Uh, I'll, I'll make a few other comments before I get to my book. There was a there's this uh, proposal for the Remembrance Day holiday, and the one thing I have a problem with is that it's going to be another holiday. Remembrance Day is all about sacrifice. I strongly believe, that's my belief, that on that day, yeah, the businesses are going to be closed. But why should anybody, like the employees, make a dollar, be paid for their day? It's, it's a day of sacrifice. Grand. You close the business, the business don't make money. The employees, you're going to learn what sacrifice is about. You don't get paid. There should be no internet. There should be no 
fast food outlets. We have what we have today because of people sacrificing their lives on the battlefield. Had they not done that, would we have these things today? And to drive the mission home, we should have none of that working or operating on November 11th. We should pay our respect to those who went out and fought for our freedoms and, and, and liberty. If they were to propose that, I'm all for that. But to have another holiday where everybody's going to have just another Christmas or another no, I Easter, I don't think they're doing the right thing. There's only one way this can be done properly, and I feel that's the way as I just explained. That that'd be the second thing. Well, uh, if, nothing is, if nothing is open, no stores are open, then, you know, that's what I'm saying. There are no stores open. Yeah. There are no restaurants open. Absolutely. No fast yeah. food outlets. No internet. You shut down the internet in the country for that. No gas stations. No gas stations. You have nothing. Because we have everything because of people who made that sacrifice. So if we close everything down to make people understand what it's like to have nothing because you have no freedoms, no rights. I mean, we couldn't even have this day today if the people that fought on the battlefield didn't die for this. So that's, that's my thought on it. Now for my book. Um, if those who haven't seen it. That's the commercial. That's the commercial. I wrote this book. It took me two years to write it. it took me 23 years to live it. And uh, for those who don't know it, that's how I stopped collecting all money for the government. Tea Party of One. All governments invited. I took on all three governments, federal, provincial, and municipal, on a tax issue. Uh, provincial was the sales tax. Federal was the GSD. And, and municipal was the business tax. And I would like to say that I am, I'm a strong believer that the business tax and municipalities ended because of what I did. Because they put me off twice to go to the OMB. And uh, the province was doing somersaults on trying to figure it out, trying to figure out business tax. And by the end of the day, they had to kill it because it couldn't be applied properly. If you read my book, you'll understand why. Anyway, I just came back from a book tour. Um, I went to, uh, in September, I did seven cities. I did New Westminster, Victoria, Penticton, Kelowna, Calgary, Edmonton, and Grand Prairie in 14 days. Seven wow. cities in 14 wow. days. It was a nice tour. I didn't exactly get the crowds that Justin Bieber gets. <laughs> <laughs> My audience was quite older. <laughs> and a lot higher IQ. <laughs> true, true. Man, I'm going to have to add that. that. I'm going to add that. that <laughs> have you got that on tape? <laughs> he's, he's into his third beer. Be careful. <laughs> and the message I came across uh, from, from them to me was that they all understand what I'm talking about because they all have that idea. My approach to it is that we are business people are slaves to the government on collecting money for them. 80 to 90 percent of every dollar that is collected for the government is done so by small business. If small business do not have to collect money for the government anymore, the only way the government can get its money is by dealing with every individual directly. Someone who earns $11 an hour, well, for every dollar that person is being paid, their employer is paying 50 cents more in unemployment, CPP, workman's comp, and anything else you want to figure out. Sir, that's not right. That's 5%. It's about 30%. I said 50. You said, oh, I thought you said five. No, well, no, you no. said 50 cents at 11 bucks. That's five percent. No, 50, every dollar, 50, dollar, 50 oh, cents okay. on every dollar. Okay. Now, that represents $16 for an, the minimum wage wow. So if they had to send a check every month that would leave them with $9 or okay, even $10 an hour, they would see $7 an hour disappearing every month they'd have to send to the government. Do you think they'd continue saying their services are free? No. The mindset of the population would change dramatically. And they would stop voting well for people like they have at the problems of Ontario. Speaking with John Robson in, uh, earlier this year, uh, in the summer, we were talking about, Beth was there, and uh, we asked John Robson 
How big is the government involved in the economy? First of all, we have an economy that is $1.5 trillion. That's not counting the underground economy. And the government is into 60% of that. That means $900 billion of our economy goes through federal and provincial governments. Prior to the First World War, the government was taking 10% of that, of the economy, which means in today's version, the government would be taking 150 billion. That is, federal and provincial governments together would only be taking 150 billion. 750 billion would be left to roll around in the economy before going through the government, before being wasted through a bureaucracy, before being wasted through a different program. How much prosperity would that give us? Now, it's one thing to complain about our bureaucrats and our, and our politicians, but the politicians have a heavy, heavy job to do. Patrick. Uh, spoke about how there's 32 people running the Conservative Party. Well, changing that party is going to be easy, the easy job. The tough job is going to be dealing with the bureaucracy. I just came back from a, uh, an election Canada meeting and I was sitting right next to the Conservatives. Their top lawyer and one of their top managers. And their top lawyer tried to help the PC during the provincial election and he was told no. So he said, you know, like, fine. Seek your own shit. But he was complaining on how wasteful this campaign was for the conservatives. <laughs> and Tim Moan, who's the lead, who's now the leader of the Libertarian Party of Canada, after we've done talking with him, he turns to me and says, these are positive libertarians. Well, you know, a lot of conservatives are coming over to the Libertarian Party now because the conservatives are not conservative enough. But what they were saying is, and, and, and when this gentleman started talking about how he wanted to help the PCs and how badly the bureaucracy was out of hand in the province, I said, well, what about federally? I said, why don't you make an effort federally? He says, we do. But he says, the minute we come forward to the bureaucracy, and it, it's got to be the same thing at the provincial level. So the minute we come forward at the federal bureaucracy, the top manager is saying, if you try to modify, reduce us, we'll go to war with the government. And that's what is, and that's, I believe that. Bureaucracies are there for one thing, to get bigger. Yep. Because the people at the top want a bigger department underneath them so that they can make more money and have more power. And that, unfortunately, is the problem we have. So when I'm saying that if the people have to send in the money directly to the government, 